Hello, Guthrie America. I'm so excited to be here with you today. Today we are having a legislative chamber chat. I'm here to introduce you to Jim Case, Price Purvis for Ward 1. And first with us today, we have Jim Case. Thank you for being here. Thanks for having me. So what is your vision for the community and moving forward? My vision for Guthrie is to see it become vibrant again, to see it, see it grow and prosper, um, to see us capitalize a little bit better on the events we do have and help to encourage uh, more of the same. What opportunities do you see our community having over the next decade? Well, we've got a lot of them. We have something that no other city in the state of Oklahoma, or for that matter in the nation, has in historical value. We, we are a venue that, that can't be matched and we're not marketing that like we ought to. Mm -hmm. And I think by doing that and by encouraging the uh, entrepreneurs that have already begun to market us, that already have begun to bring new events and um, create a venue from Guthrie that it's not been. It's not a historical venue they're creating. They're creating an, an entertainment mecca. Mm -hmm. uh, we have an opportunity with, with uh, corporate conferences and things of that nature. We've got the Masonic Temple that can be used for such things. We've got buildings downtown that could be used for that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And we're not, we're not doing that kind of stuff. So I'd like to see us do more of that. As an example, the, the 89er Day Parade. Mm -hmm. Let's say we bring in on average 40,000 people for the 89er Day Parade. Mm -hmm. And we market ourselves and we bring in, say, 50,000 people. And each of those extra 10,000 people buy a $5 hot dog, <laughs> that, that equates to $4,500 in does. additional sales it tax does. revenue. Yeah. Yeah. And that's just one event. Mm -hmm. So if we continue to do this kind of stuff and make use of that sales tax, mm -hmm. let's actually make it benefit us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I think those are where the opportunities lie. Mm -hmm. uh, conventions, I think we can do more of that. Mm -hmm. And uh, actually, get our, if we get the people behind us, the public behind us, and that's gonna require a little bit from both sides. I think we've got a little bit of negativity on the part of the public, and mm -hmm. uh, we don't communicate well on the part of the city council. Mm -hmm. And I think we need to do a better job of doing that and mm -hmm. keeping people involved and participating mm -hmm. with city government so mm -hmm. that you don't have the division that we've got today. What was your plans to capitalize on those opportunities? We also have to look at our infrastructure and what we need to do there, uh, uh, increasing our, or not increasing, but improving mm -hmm. our, our water uh, dispersal mm -hmm. and, and our sewage, and, uh, and our water treatment plant is a, uh, very nice plant, mm -hmm. but it doesn't do much good if it's going through old rusty pipes to get to your house. Mm -hmm. You still get mm -hmm. a lower quality water than what you should be getting. We need mm -hmm. to figure out a way mm -hmm. to finance improving those things. Mm -hmm. Our sewage treatment plant, on the other hand, we are that close to being under federal mandate on. Mm -hmm. And if we don't, I mean, uh, the only reason we're not is because our city council has been very forward thinking and they've taken steps to keep the federal government from coming down on us. The fact that we're working at it, the fact that we're trying, mm -hmm. they realize that we're not in a, uh, an area with a lot of populace that can, can support these kinds of major mm -hmm. changes mm -hmm. very easily. So they're working with us on it and they haven't mm -hmm. fined us, they haven't done anything. Mm -hmm. But when, it, when they finally get to the end of their rope mm -hmm. and they say, okay, well, uh, we've waited, we've tried, we've worked with you, and you've not gotten anywhere, so the only way I think is to provide an incentive, and that incentive is seven hundred thousand dollars a year in fines, and we're going to fine you that every year until you get these improvements made. Mm -hmm. So, and we don't we don't want that. Yeah. We can't afford that. So, mm -hmm. the only thing we can do is to can continue to work towards those infrastructure improvements, so that we can, once we get the stuff that's already out there taken care of, mm -hmm. now we can expand east and west on mm -hmm. 33 Highway and, mm -hmm. and new housing developments can go in mm -hmm. or maybe new businesses, which I'd prefer to see new businesses go in. Yeah. We, need, we need employment for the city of Guthrie, mm -hmm. for the people that live here. Mm -hmm. And it's also a big boon in terms of property tax that doesn't burden the schools. Mm -hmm. Right now, whenever a, uh, a, a young couple moves here and they've got two kids, their property tax, the, the amount of money that they pay in property tax is about what you need to fund one kid in school, but they've got two 
So now we have a net loss. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, property, or property tax and schools and, and cities are two different things and people mm -hmm. need to understand that the city mm -hmm. doesn't have any control over the finances mm -hmm. other than they can help and encourage businesses to move here and mm -hmm. thus incre increase property taxes mm -hmm. and help our schools at the mm -hmm. same time. What constraints or hurdles do you see that could thwart those opportunities? I think the council we have right now has done a fabulous job. Mm -hmm. They've made mistakes. Uh, communicating is going to be a major issue. That, um, they, they've, got, they've got to be true to their word. If they say they're going to do something, that's what they need to do. Mm -hmm. If they've got to change that, if uh, let's say there's a grant that changes the way the city council views how they should purchase something or another, mm -hmm. and they've told the city that they're, or the citizens that they're going to do this, mm -hmm. but this grant money makes their mind change. Mm -hmm. So, but the city needs to be informed of that mm -hmm. so they understand why we're doing what we're doing. Mm -hmm. It can't just be okay. Well, let's mm -hmm. just go ahead and do that, and mm -hmm. then the city's mad at them again. Mm -hmm. So we've mm -hmm. got we've got to work be work to better improve the. Uh, communication between the city mm -hmm. and council and that that's on the council's part on the city's part on the citizens part they need to get involved mm -hmm. they need to be more informed better informed mm -hmm. as Jim would say mm -hmm. a, a better informed citizen is a, yeah. is a good citizen yeah. and uh, being up here and, and or watching on Cox or watching on the internet or mm -hmm. coming up here and sitting in on meetings um, that's how they can better improve the relations between the city and mm -hmm. and the city council. Mm -hmm. I think social media could play a big role in that. I've seen that you, you started to be more on social media and starting to talk about issues that right. you see are out there. I think because people are always on that. Right. You know, so they that's are. something. It, well, it's also, right now anyway, it's an avenue for <laughs> increasing negativity. That's no. what's got to change. Yeah, that's, it, it's, that's it's not got good. to change. People have got to learn to trust and the city's got to make it the city council's got to make it possible for them to trust absolutely so and once that changes once the atmosphere changes i think then at that point the city will begin to pr prosper what are present day challenges that you think their community is facing jobs is a big deal mm -hmm. i think we've got to bring in jobs and they've got mm -hmm. to be major jobs i don't want to drive people out of business uh, it, much like, and I'm not harping on Walmart, I like yeah. Walmart just like anybody else does. But when Walmart came in, that's what dried up downtown. Mm -hmm. In every city in Oklahoma, not just mm -hmm. in Guthrie, every mm -hmm. place mm -hmm. had the same thing happen. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's not, we've got to get those buildings full. We've mm -hmm. got to get people down there using them. Mm -hmm. Maybe there's grant money available that we don't know about yet that we can help those people restore those buildings with mm -hmm. and make them what they need to be to mm -hmm. be able to be in business and do what they need to do. So what challenges do you see on the horizon? The populace is moving this direction. The closer they get, mm -hmm. the more apt they are to move into Guthrie mm -hmm. and or into the Guthrie area where uh, will the challenges I've already talked about are going to increase mm -hmm. and we've got to be prepared for that. Mm -hmm. um, we, the city council has developed a rainy day fund, which we've never had before and uh, to handle emergencies, but that's only going to go so far and we have to be prepared for that. We have to keep the sales tax running mm -hmm. because it's, you're, it's a half measure for us to stop the sales tax at the end of its term. We, mm -hmm. we need it to continue. Mm -hmm. And the reason we need it to continue is because we've, we're so fall, far behind the eight ball. There, we've kicked the can for too long. Mm -hmm. And so now there's just way too much to do. Mm -hmm. And the only way we continue, can continue to improve our city and improve the quality of life here is if we continue to invest in our city. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what we do with that sales tax. What qualities do you think that you have that make you a good leader? When I was uh, master of Albert Pike Lodge here in town in 2008, uh, I started a newsletter and had constant emails going out to the lodge and they, they started calling me the great communicator. Okay, And that's so I think, I think that Mm -hmm. That's going to be a quality that is going to help me a bunch. I've been in leadership many times before, mm -hmm. and uh, it's 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 something that I excel at. Mm -hmm. I, I like being involved. Mm -hmm. uh, when I'm not involved, I probably won't participate at all. I'm either going to be involved or yeah. not involved, and, yeah. that's, and that's why I'm running. Is I think I can help the city. Mm -hmm. I think I can help improve the relationship between the citizens in the city. And uh, I've, got, I've got ideas that need to be explored. And, mm -hmm. and I want to explore what the city has in ideas already. 
um, which means working together. And I think we have to learn to cooperate mm -hmm. and, and not be a uh, thorn in the side of, of any of the things we're trying to do to uh, help our town prosper. Uh, we, we, have to, we have to work together between city and city council, and the city council has to work together. Accomplishments require collaboration. How do you work well with others to find common ground? Compromise is how anything mm -hmm. moves forward mm -hmm. uh, in our federal government. That's what's wrong, mm -hmm. is nobody wants to compromise. Everybody's got this staunch opinion over here, mm -hmm. and nobody wants to come to the middle and find common ground. Mm -hmm. And that's what's wrong with it. And mm -hmm. I've always been somebody that was willing to come to the middle. Mm -hmm. And you know, m maybe you get a little bit more than I do. I don't care. Mm -hmm. We've got to get something done. We've mm -hmm. got to have progress. Mm -hmm. And we're not going to have it if we continue to just sit and fight. What three things do you think are wins for our community? What three things do you think are going well here? Entertainment. Mm -hmm. I think, uh, just to drop a few names, Justin Fortney, James Long, mm -hmm. Gary Good, those mm -hmm. people have brought entertainment to Guthrie. They've, um, they've helped to bring tax revenue to Guthrie. Mm -hmm. They've helped to make Guthrie prosper and put us on the map. Mm -hmm. and, and people really enjoy that kind of stuff. The, mm -hmm. the, uh, Red Brick Nights, mm -hmm. awesome idea, mm -hmm. awesome idea. Mm -hmm. And that was all somebody's, some entrepreneur's idea. It wasn't yeah. the city, yeah. it wasn't city council or chamber or anything mm -hmm. else. It was James Long mm -hmm. and Justin Fortney putting their efforts together, putting yeah. their heads together. Yeah. And I think the more we take entrepreneurs mm -hmm. and business leaders and entertainment people and we get them together and mm -hmm. figure out marketing strategies for that kind of stuff, mm -hmm. The sky's the limit. Mm -hmm. I think that's that's a big thing right there. Our mm -hmm. history, of course, is always going to be mm -hmm. uh, a marketable quality about Guthrie mm -hmm. that um, we can continue to expand on. Uh, conventions and things, bringing those to Guthrie is another thing that I think is is going to is going to happen. I think we've got business leaders that are going to start trying to utilize the facilities we have here, uh, maybe even incorporating, say. Hoboken or Rick's to come up and serve coffee during their meetings or Missy's to bring up donuts or, or have a, a lunch deal where Stacy's brings up food mm -hmm. or Stables brings up food mm -hmm. for those conventions and, and get, get the ball rolling. I, I think that's really, we've, we've had the same population since 1889, <laughs> you know, and though that's not necessarily a bad thing, it shows that we haven't really marketed ourselves. Mm -hmm. And I think until we start marketing ourselves, we're not gonna get to the places we wanna get to. What's one thing that you would want the people of Guthrie to know about you? Married, got two kids, they're grown, in school here, uh, graduated, uh, they're, and they're, they, my daughter now works for me. Mm -hmm. um, She's good. <laughs> uh, and she wants to, you mm -hmm. know. It's, it, I suppose that's interesting that I've, I've got a girl doing electrical work. That's, that's really that's interesting. Really and uncommon. that she wants to work for her dad. That says something. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, but um, I enjoy uh, getting in the mix and, and doing this kind of stuff and being part of leadership and, and helping to attain goals. And, and that's what it is for me. It's not so much the day-to-day -day business of city council, but how is this working towards our goals and what are our goals? We need mm -hmm. to lay out our goals. Mm -hmm. We need to have a master plan, mm -hmm. and uh, I, I think we've we've got to do that. And and uh, I I bring a lot to the table. I think mm -hmm. that's great. Well, thank you for coming, Jim. We really appreciate you taking the time to be here. You bet. And you good bet. luck. Welcome back, everybody. We're now here with Price Purvis. Price, thank you for being here. Thanks for having me. Yeah, we appreciate you coming in. So I gave you a list of questions. So yes, let's go through. You sheets. got your notes. There you go. <laughs> First off, let's start with what is your vision for our community? I like to see Guthrie thrive. Guthrie is a great community. We have many opportunities to showcase, our, showcase ourselves. Mm -hmm. um, we have great local groups, great organizations that put on a lot of events, parades, anything and everything you could want. We need to help them the best we can. Mm -hmm. We also need a plan. We have to uh, build ourselves up before we can really throw anything on top of it. We need a great infrastructure um, for our city so we can have a 20 to 30 year plan mm -hmm. that outlives me, 
anyone that mm -hmm. creates this plan. What opportunities do you see Guthrie having in the future? We have a great location at I-35 and Highway 33. Great for uh, development, industry, retail. We need to work to build, extend our infrastructure out there, work to build um, industry to come in to create better jobs, better tax base. And then I would love to see my own personal one is a downtown Wi-Fi. So what are your plans to uh, make that happen? We need to work with the developers, the investors, those that come in and actually do the work to create those mm -hmm. um, parcels into viable opportunities for businesses. We need to either um, attract them through marketing, um, however we can do it. We are limited on what we can do as a city because we are bound by laws but we also have the ability to use those laws as a toolbox and mm -hmm. how we can then you don't use a Phillips head to unscrew a uh, <laughs> flat head but sometimes you can use a knife I mean okay. you, you, yeah. you figure out what we can do and then mm -hmm. I'm not a developer I'm not an investor I'm a problem solver that I like to look at the situation and see how we can uh, fix it or uh, mm -hmm. create a better solution for it. So what constraints or hurdles would you see that would thwart those opportunities? We need to have better water lines, better sewer, better um, just all around avenues for utilities for our businesses that want to come in. A business does not want to come in that they have to put in mm -hmm. a million dollars for a water line or a million dollars for a sewer or mm -hmm. put in their own septic. They want to be on city, they want to be on city water, city sewer. Mm -hmm. They need that to make their business grow. Mm -hmm. um, another issue is creating that plan and following through it. Plans are fluid. What we think we might need in 20 years is not what we may need in 10 years down the line. We're like, we, we've got, but as long as we have something that we can drive toward, mm -hmm. we're able to mm -hmm. just creating that, keep looking at it and going back and revitalizing it. What do you see are the present day challenges? What are we facing today? This one popped up on Facebook recently, and okay. I'm sure everybody's aware of it. It's mm -hmm. parking, uh, not just in residential, but downtown. Mm -hmm. uh, we are constrained by laws. We have to be in compliance with state law. If we're not, we are at li we are at, have a liability issue. Mm -hmm. um, we need to work on not just getting ourselves compliant, but also how can we, like I said, there the laws are a toolbox. How can we work around them? Not break the laws, but can we ask for an exception? Can we mm -hmm. ask for different um, grandfathering clauses for, okay, we've been doing this for so long, this is what we need to do. Can we get a, an opinion or get rules that say in your central business district or your historical district? How can we, because our buildings are not up to code. They're not, I mean, you, and anytime you have to do something, you have to bring it up to code. Mm -hmm. How can we get exceptions or something along those lines? So what challenges do you see on the horizon? The parking is one. Um, another is issue would be, again, our infrastructure, trying to create a better, um, we need better water lines, we need better sewer. Um, working with all the community leaders to create that 30-year plan and getting people to put together a plan that doesn't put any one person or one thing first, it's for the betterment of the community. Because in 30, 50 years, we're not going to be here and it's for our children, our grandchildren. How mm -hmm. can we make it a better place for them? So what would be your plan to address these challenges specifically? As for uh, with parking, ask for exceptions. You can go through the state with your legislature. You can get exceptions for central business districts or historic districts. You can work on reducing speeds. You can work on um, how, they, how you park. As for um, working with infrastructure grants, trying to figure out what we can do to uh, get better federal grants, to work with building our, our and replacing our 100-year-old <laughs> type mm -hmm. of system we have mm -hmm. here. But what qualities do you think make you a good leader? I've worked in nonprofit management for the last five years and with city governments as an attorney. Okay. I have worked for a nonprofit for six years prior to um, that I am currently an assistant city attorney in the city of Enid. Okay. I understand the laws, I understand the problems cities face. Mm -hmm. I've been an advisor to government uh, officials uh, operating 
how can we do this? We've got this law or we want to redo this law. What can we do? Mm -hmm. And I've offered suggestions and things like that at, mm -hmm. um, at both the city state mm -hmm. level. Um, my management style is very, you do your job. As long as you do your job, mm -hmm. we, we don't have problems. If a problem arises, we work as a team to, mm -hmm. to fix it. Accomplishments require collaboration. How do you work to help others in finding common ground, working together? There's a picture that I really like. It's two people standing facing each other. They're looking at the ground and one person sees a six, the other person sees a nine. From their point of view, they're both correct. Mm -hmm. We've got to work and look at all aspects. If the person seeing the nine were to walk around, they'd see, oh, we're seeing a six here. That's why you saw it this way. We need to listen to understand. We don't need mm -hmm. to listen to reply. Mm -hmm. And I am as guilty as anyone <laughs> saying that my ideas are better than anyone else's, mm -hmm. but we have to get through that mm -hmm. and get to the idea that we are not a one-man show. It's the group mm -hmm. and fostering that I hate to answer a question with the word, but that collaborative effort mm -hmm. to um, create a, a better mm -hmm. gathering. What three wins do you think our community currently has? First is our unique history. Mm -hmm. We have we, we are stuck in a time capsule because of what happened mm -hmm. in 1910. And it's great. It's mm -hmm. not a bad thing. We, we have such a great collection of buildings, history, that we need to showcase it. Mm -hmm. Our next are our citizens. We've got an awesome group of citizens mm -hmm. willing to work, willing to put in the effort, willing to say, you know what, I've got to work until midnight to make this happen. Mm -hmm. And then just our friendliness. Mm -hmm. My wife could never figure out why it took me so long to go to Walmart or the grocery <laughs> store. She's from Owasso. Uh, and they just go to the store and they come they home. They leave. That's not how we I do go it. in and <laughs> When someone says, hi, how are you? It's a genuine question. Mm -hmm. And continuing that, continuing to say, hi, how are you doing? And listen. So what's one thing that you would want Guthrie America to know about you? One thing I think people should know about me is I love to travel. Okay. And I love to go and ask, how did you do that? Mm -hmm. um, even, in, even in Oklahoma, we have so many great communities. And when I go to them, I'm like, how did you get this to, hap to happen? I ask those questions. I encourage everyone to ask those questions. Mm -hmm. How did it happen? How did it, it how did you get to where you are now? Mm -hmm. um, and we don't own the right on how to do things. Let's figure it out, take what other communities have done and bring mm -hmm. it back to Guthrie. Mm -hmm. Don't invent, reinvent the wheel. No. That's right. Okay, that's great. Well, thank you, Price. We appreciate you taking the time to be here. Thank you for having me. Yeah, good luck. Thank you.